somehow, Leader has returned. We're all talking about Jeff today, but honestly, with these new patch notes coming around, I don't know about you guys. Leader, oh man. Uh, leader is cheater. It might be back on the menu. This could be great in some Sandman decks. Jeff is working great with Sandman Electro Ramp. But with the leader uh, and some other stuff we got going on, leader got buffed. They reduced the power from seven to two, and they kind of brought back what made leader special. Copy enemy cards at the highest power played this turn, but on your side. This is going to be God tier with Samix. You only can play one card, you know, I guess, except Jeff. You can technically play Jeff and someone else. And if you're already winning in two zones, all you got to do is play leader, copy their highest power card. You're good to go. Uh, a couple of the stuff we have here. Let's go check it out. Bring them on over, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we have some updates here. A uh, couple of nerfs, a couple of buffs going on like leader. <laughs> oh, man. Leader, um, they definitely nerfed it to oblivion. There was like really no reason to play a leader. Now there's kind of a reason to play a leader, man. Uh, it's a cool change. Yeah, Max Strong. It's a. It's going to be great with Sandman decks. Sandman decks have been really strong uh, this particular season. So I want to talk about a few things here. Let's talk about the patch note highlights. We have some token shop updates. Weekly spotlight. When a new series five card is released, it'll be immediately featured on its own selection. And you can see that over here inside the game. Bring it on over. I already picked up Jeff. We're about to hop in. Have a little bit of fun. But now uh, it's, it's, it's just, this is stuff we talked about. There should be multiple cards kind of listed in here. The alter variants are cool, but they shouldn't be taking up token shop valuable positions but it's already so hard to acquire cards inside of this game so it's kind of nice to me at the spotlight you know the people who want to play the cards they don't have to worry about struggling to find it which is great right so that's a nice little change they got here the first time they're doing it once you buy the weekly spotlight card the section will be hidden until the next new card is released if you want the newest cards at release here's what you've been waiting for alta variants as you just saw they kind of got their own segment which is fine series four series five this section functions nearly the same as previously it only features series four and series five cards this section will feature a card you don't own from all currently available series four and series five shenanigans out there and into their own rotation for those of you who want to make your decks that much cooler and then uh moving on here we have game board update they had some game board new art f special effects uh this is kind of neat a series drops always nice and fun let's see what's being dropped so we're seeing uh ghost stature modok go from series five to series four Modoc, uh, great for this card, kind of a must if you want to make this card work. Stature, I kind of like Stature, only downside of Stature, you only really only could make it work if you played Black Bolt, if you played Moon Knight, or your opponent played a discard deck. So it was kind of hard to make it work, but when it popped off, it felt great. It worked great too with um, with the, uh, my gosh, the Quinjet. And now with the Quinjet being nerfed, it doesn't work as well. It was great doing Stature and the Moon Girl and the Quinjet. It doesn't work as well like that, but still it was kind of nice to play. I think Quinjet definitely hurt Stature a little bit. And Ghost, didn't really see much uh, special Ghost. That's one that's the only Series 4 card from this drop that I do not have. I don't mind checking out. There are some times or having second parties nice. Like, for example, using Hazmat. Series 4 to Series 3, Shuri, which is also getting some changes. And we actually kind of called it. The change they did, we totally got where we were on spot with it all it's kind of meant to give some counterplay because right now the problem is you play cosmo lane you play shuri in another lane and then you, you go ahead and you put the card you, you're boosting of shuri in the cosmo lane or whatever it might be and now they're making it a little bit more tricky to pull up that specific combo so shuri i still think it's gonna be good uh but there's i think it's still gonna be very powerful so if you're hoping it's gonna nerf i think it's really nerfing mostly the interactions with that with that red skull taskmaster deck Bass, a uh, really powerful card if you love hit monkey it's great valkyrie's kind of a funny card people have been trying to make it work sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't valkyrie coming down the series three it's kind of one of those interesting cards to work super scroll uh, this is a card that people have been loving with the feature location onslaught citadel it's one of those cards i think it's uh it's kind of a sleeper card i feel like people always slept on this especially with devil dinos dark hawk the only downside is if there's not an ongoing card on your opponent's side kind of useless and then black panther also great uh maybe not meta but still a decent card nonetheless of artem zola and a few other things here so i want to get straight to the balance update skip all the other shenanigans here so <laughs> they've been targeting shuri taskmaster lockjaw leech leech is getting a nerf it's kind of what i said the bare minimum needed to be i'd be fine with that card i've never called for nerfs in the past Leech is the one card I'm fine with it being nerfed to oblivion. I didn't care about Zabu, Silver Surfer. Heck, I don't even care about Shuri working the way it is. Uh, Leech is the one card I just feel like does not belong in a game where you're supposed to use abilities on multiple cards. 
Anyways, in the wake of our last balance change, we saw the metagame settle into a much healthier shape than it had been before. However, we were too shallow with our adjustments to Shuri Taskmaster and Lockjaw Leech Shells, both with and without Thanos, and ever made solid contenders. Today's change is aimed to push both of those decks off their clear top spots. Outside of Shuri Taskmaster, the meta game is looking healthy. It's definitely been um definitely been one of the more diverse metas for sure. But looking at Shuri, so before double the power of the next card you play, and you can play the card anywhere. And we kind of talked about this in the past, where now they're turning Shuri kind of into a Shuri's lab, where you have to play the next card here to get that double power. So we considered a number of changes to Shuri, but they all tend to ruin her current decks. Some even theoretically risk making a new monster with different parts. That's not a great risk to run on balancing a problematic strong card. <laughs> the change we're making today may seem small and subtle, but we expect it to be impactful and retain some of the flow of play for her existing deck, which is consistent goal with our balanced philosophy. The nerf removes the cause. It's really the Cosmo Protectus, as we talked about. For her target, makes a single card answers like Valkyrie easier to aim and indirectly buffs lanes control like Professor X. We're taking a risk here in that this nerf could leave Shuri still a strength outlier. If so, we'll react quickly. Uh, I don't know. I, I get even with the current Taskmaster thing, I never really found her to be like nerf worthy again. I'm more of the camp. I want to buff cards, not nerf cards. The only card I've ever wanted to nerf playing this game for all whatever months I've been playing has been Leech. That's the only one. And we'll talk about Leech in a moment. So as we said, generally you play turn three Cosmo, turn four Shuri in the non-Cosmo lane, and then you put in the, uh, the Red Skull behind the Cosmo, Taskmaster and armor. This is directly targeting the Cosmo interact. So you can't do turn three Cosmo and you can't play Shuri in the Cosmo lane because then you can't get the on reveal effect to go off. So we'll see how it goes. Again, it doesn't bother me that much Shuri the way it is, but I know it's definitely bothered quite a few people. I still think Shuri is going to be great. This is really just targeting the Red Skull uh, Cosmo shenanigans. Leech, this was the bare minimum that we said in the past. I, it, it baffled me. There was people okay with turn three, turn sometimes even turn two Leech, depending on what locations you got, which is absolutely insane. So before nothing changes the power, energy cost, you remove all the abilities from your cards and your opponent's hand. So if you got the lockjaw to pull out Leech right away on sometimes turn two, sometimes turn three, boom, you're, 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 it sucked. But now they changed it where it's something at least bare minimum that we talked about where it only activates at the, at the start of turn six. Remove all abilities from the cards and your opponent. So it's still gonna nuke your entire hand. At least you got a bit of a heads up <laughs> that it's coming our way. I still think this is a dumb card to have in a game where you're supposed to use abilities. Let's read what they said. It's never been our goal for Leech to be a heavily played card, and we understand that it's, it's been a frustrating uh, lately. When it's happening, it usually means a finisher is generically strong against a pure power like Leech Leader and or a deck that can play Leech earlier than turn five too often like Lockjaw Thanos. We've tried in the past to weaken the stronger cards in those decks, but it's been a balance and design obstacle. Thus, we've decided to remove the early Leech, which is definitely the most annoying part about it from the equation. Leech designed to counter some powerful endgame cards and combinations from a unique angle without any setup, which is important to have around in the event those decks begin to overperform. This change will let him fulfill that role when necessary without ever making a foundational piece, foundational piece of the metagame. Um, you know, it's a minimal change. I, I think Leech shouldn't nuke a whole hand. It should be maybe like Iceman where it hits a couple of cards at random. You know, I think this is still a little too powerful of a card. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Lockjaw getting hit again pretty hard. Uh, it's basically now you can't just like spam the Lockjaw slot machine. Now, after you play a card or swap for the card in deck, but it's only once per turn. So no longer can you play like three stones and Lockjaw. Long story short, they want you to spread across your power a little bit more. Limiting Lockjaw to one swap each turn, force the player to develop their board without letting them sprint ahead or spring a late surprise. This will make Lockjaw simpler to play against and less potent in the decks. Incidentally, playing lots of cheap cards like Thanos. So yeah, this is definitely a hit to Lockjaw. I don't know if this is going to hurt Thanos a lot. I'm going to say it's going to definitely hurt Thanos a bit. At the minimum, that was the main upside. You throw a bunch of stones in Lockjaw, and you might get out You might get out Death. You might get out the Hulk, so whatever the case. Infinite, uh, Giganto. Hey, not as much of that anymore in Forge. So Thanos got kind of another hit here. I, I already wasn't crazy about Lockjaw because it's a very RNG deck. This definitely minimizes that RNG even more and not in the best of way. Yeah, gonna feel bad when Lockjaw pulls out Wasp. Oh boy, it's gonna feel horrible. I agree with you, Yotter. America's Chavez, this is a very minor change. Uh, the way Chavez worked is that, let's say you were technically supposed to draw it like on turn three, four, five, uh, whatever. It, it would kind of like hover above your deck 
but it would only let you it would kind of pull the next card underneath Shava's now what they're doing is that with Shava's it's starting at the bottom of the deck and then you draw it on turn six so basically you know Yandu can't hit it anymore sometimes Yandu would hit Chavez and that might help your opponent you know Chavez is mostly meant to be a card to thin out the deck increase the odds of getting the other cards you'd much rather have from turn one to turn five so um it's kind of hard to tell this is a nerf you know it depends if you like Yandu hitting the Chavez otherwise you're probably not gonna notice as they say here thus far this has been largely unimportant, uh, unimportant outside of Yandu but it does restrict our ability to print cards that interact with the top of your deck. And this is, I think, what they're trying to shoot at. We're about to get some cards here soon. We talked about it where you can see the next card on the top of your deck. And if it's always Chavez, it's kind of be kind of a problematic interaction. So I don't I think for the most part, you're not going to notice it. And it's going to help mostly the future cards that are coming out. Card in the top right hand corner. If you want to talk about all those cards that are coming very shortly to Marvel Snap Jubilee, I'm getting something a little similar uh where now this kind of makes a little bit of sense i suppose you're gonna add the top card of your deck to this location so before it was a lockjaw you'd randomly pull something out of your deck now it's the next card and again i think this is gonna make more sense down the road when you see cards that let you reveal what's uh what's the next card in your deck having julie pull that out it's gonna add some strategic advantage to your hand uh, to your hand leader we already talked about it this is the most interesting thing right here Oh, uh, we're going to be testing out some leader today. Leader, I think, is back on the menu, boys and gals. So now you copy enemy cards with the highest power played this turn, but on your side. And they even acknowledged they nerfed leader to oblivion. We were clearly too harsh on leader with this previous nerf and were dismayed that action became a go-to example for how ruinous a nerf can be. Our balance of philosophy is to preserve as much playability as we reasonably can when weakening cards, and we didn't succeed here previously. With this change, we're aiming to bring his strength back into a playable spot for a six cost card, but still avoid the oppressive impact from his original form hat. And it made sense. Be able to copy, it's, you know, it's crazy that they're okay with Leech nuking an entire ham, but they weren't okay with Leech copying the entire play. You know, it's kind of in the similar vein, right? Their Leech copied everything, they nerfed into oblivion. We have erred on this, uh, the cautious side with his power for now because some of the previous defenses against the original leader, such as playing weaker cards before a strong one, no longer applied. Uh, so that's really the most important thing that we have here. Um, a lot of couple, lot of bug fixes, a lot of new virtual effects that are going on here. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, my, my most controversial opinion. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to say it because it's so dumb. I kind of miss the days when I was first playing Marvel Snap, especially. I miss the days of raging on leader, you know? Uh, it's like I felt the game got a little too easy after leader. It's like sometimes I miss that little burst of rage. The leader is cheater type mentality. I guess my uh, my emotions went over to Leech uh, later on as a result. But uh, seeing leader get some playability again, I think this is definitely gonna make it more playable before, which is completely unusable. I mean, you could have maybe done like a Professor X on the left and you play, you know, leader in the middle next time around. It, it just wasn't that viable. So leader, I fully expect Sandman is going to make a lot of use out of this guy. I don't know. You guys let me know. Yeah, good call on cable. Yeah, also, yeah, people are talking about, uh, th I think the cable interview, you're talking about America Chavez. Yeah, this mob. Yeah, I think you might be talking about the, what are we talking about? The uh, America Chavez interaction of cable. Yeah, probably there's going to be an interaction to be had there. Yeah, it's an interesting Chavez change. I think for most folks, you're not going to notice it. But I, as we said, there are going to be some cards like Jubilee, as we talked about here, or uh, some other cards that are coming down the road. I think that's mostly what they're shooting for but overall the buffs um yeah i mean I, you know most of this is all nerfs I, I i take issue with games that just nerf 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 because there's always going to be something that people are going to want to nerf i truly believe in the gaming philosophy the design philosophy like nerfs should be kind of used as an emergency situation the game should foster a way to get access to cards that are just better and overcome the previous meta i could be in the wrong a lot of the games i have played the solution to beating something very meta dominant was mostly introducing new 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 units to kind of overcome it and nerfs are kind of used in a like one out of 20 scenario uh, if that so uh, i hate seeing cards get nerfed uh, i really do except leech leech the one card I, i'd be i wouldn't i wouldn't shed a tear if that card got removed from the game entirely <laughs> anyways
You guys let me know down below. Maybe I'm in the minority where I'm not crazy about nerfs. I'm more into the buff camp or uh, getting new cards. But anyways, leave that like, comment down below. Scrub side. Do not miss a thing. Oh, man. And always remember that it's great to be in the Empire today. Yes.